Okay, then. my name is um, Jeff Howland, and I'm uh, here today to um, bid for the project of the anti-fouling down at the farm of Marine Harbour. I have approximately 15 to 20 years experience in painting already, working on various building sites as well as private painting, uh, you know, painting and decorating. So I believe um, I have a good knowledge of the health and safety issues that uh, surround some of the products I might be using. I have a meeting with the Harbour Commissioner on Friday, hopefully, he's, he's getting back to me today to discuss the way forward, um, basically to discuss what I plan on doing. And what I plan on doing is, um, this is one of my test strips, I plan on sticking various test strips painted obviously with Antifel down on the pontoons down at the harbour, so obviously submerged, and I'll be, uh, mon I'll be monitoring the breakdown of the Antifel, um, invasive species as well as um, organism, organism ab uh, abundance on there. I will also be expanding this from the project last year, because I'm taking on from the, um, a lady who did the project last year. I'll be expanding by approaching boat owners in, in the harbour and um, hopefully having some of these test strips attached to their boat so I'll get a much more of a realistic feel and, and, and more realistic results at, at, at the end of my survey. Um, I, find it, I find it's very important not only to get the e economics right of, of this project, but also to get the balance right with the, um, you know, the marine uh, you know, ecosystem structure in the area and the organisms which are going to be in contact with this product or the products I'm, I'm going to be using. Um, Basically, um, I feel privileged to have been given a second chance to do this, this marine course and I think with my background of painting, uh, combined with the chance for me to do this and this project, this is my chance basically to put something back into the industry and it, obviously it's something that I, I'm in, you know, the painting side of it, I'm very interested in, you know, in, you know, in, in, in it anyway sort of thing, so um, I'm just hopefully I'll get the go ahead, you know, from you guys and the meeting goes well with the Harbour Commissioner tomorrow. Thank you. Would you like to ask any questions? Yeah, um, my name's Harriet. My, oh, yeah, I Harriet. Yeah, I work for the Harbour Commissioner. Yeah. So you spoke to my colleague Duncan. I sent him an email yesterday. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the reply until I think it was about 8 o'clock last night. Yeah, that's okay. But, um, yeah, he said for us to get in touch. He did, yeah. Essentially, um, this is one that's really good for us. Um, uh, you'll have to start thinking of it in terms of um, are you going to be looking at copper based antivals, are you going to yeah. be looking at working boat antivals, are you going to go recreational antivals. I mean, when you start thinking about all those, they all function differently, as you'll know. Yeah. Um, if you're going to work with the harbour office, we will probably direct you to a commercial well, this, approach to Well, this it. is what I've already discussed with, well, in the email I said to the harbour, the harbour master, I said I've got no problem, you know, with testing any of their products. In fact, it'd be better for me because what we found is, uh, Helen last year, mm. she wrote to scores of um, man paint manufacturers and she only got a reply from one. Yeah. So the only products I've got at the moment, and this is my problem, is I've only got the products which she used last, you know, last year, sort of thing, you know. Yeah. So I need more of an um, expanse on that really, you know. Okay, that's all. Sounds really good. So yeah, like I said, I've got no problem. You know, be working with any other products. You know, you know, you want to uh, show me, like you know. How are you going to um, sort of measure the abundance yeah. on the test strips? The, uh, percentage cover. I'm uh, I'm uh, going to be going by sort of thing. You know, um, what I'll, what what I basically do is at the end of my project. Obviously, um, the idea of antifal as as we're all aware, you know, the better product is is going to have less organisms on there. You know, that's you know all the you know as you're well aware. But what I would do is, um, at, at the end of my survey, I'll be keeping a track all the way along. I'll, I'll be monitoring the, uh, the test strips every seven to ten days, taking photographic evidence, written evidence, etc. And what I would do is, when I've got my, all my end results at the end of my survey, I'll be getting maybe six, six, six to twelve people together, and I'll be like doing. Um, I'll, I'll be ask, I'll be asking them, you know, what they think the percentage cover is based on 100% of this plaque. And I'll be doing like a mean of that. So say for example, U4, you said it's covered by 50%, U45, U60, truly 70. I'll do a mean of that sort of thing. I'll add them all together, you know, the 12 figures, and do a mean of that, like, you know, divide by the amount of people. And that should give an average percentage cover of that, of, of, of that service. Would it perhaps be better, rather than using lots of people who are all equally inaccurate, um, <laughs> to get some kind of grid system so you could be yeah. absolutely certain? You know how we use yeah, grid I understand, yeah, with the quadrat, yeah. I mean... Maybe just an overlay on the top at yeah. the end, but yeah. I'd be concerned that lots of people will be just... I mean, I'll, 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 I'm open to all suggestions. I mean, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll be the first to admit, you know, I'm not an expert in this, you know, I'm only going to my second year. It's a bit of trial and error, and I'm sure... Uh, 
this survey will change as the year progresses, sort of thing. You know, I'm, you know I tweak it here and I tweak it there. But yeah, I'm, I'm certainly open to any you know suggestions. I can see this working um, attached by these two, perhaps some of our vessels. Yeah. Um, uh, you painted the different things, um, and that, that could be a nice mm. But that's also working in coordinates with the um, Cornwall Wildlife Trust as well. They've um, sort of like they're looking for input, sort of thing, you know, and uh, and surveying, you know, into this. So I'd work in accordance with them as well. You know, I'd share obviously I'd share my results with those, and I know hopefully I'll get a bit of feedback of them as well. You know, so. So you're attaching plates. I'm attaching them. Is it this much? This is the material, etc. This is the, this is the, the material that is originally down there, sort of thing. But, but like I say, if the harbour um, commissioner was to come to me and he gave me a bit of fiberglass or a bit of wood or a bit of steel, even, you know, I'm yeah, that's the first thing. Yeah. I was wondering how realistic yeah. that is as a surface yeah. to, to, to attach it. Yeah, to. but I'm prepared to work with any material the harbour commissioner feels. I should be working. That might affect in terms of sort of yeah. how well it could Yeah, because we yeah. use this to look at growth rates, yeah. mm. but not related to 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And I also wonder, I mean, you're talking about sort of measuring the area off the side. If it was on a plate like this, you could use sort of an electronic leaf area meter type yes. thing that would be mm. right. pretty accurate. And coverage yeah, because yeah. what you're going to end up with the problem with doing it with the grid is that you're going to be counting up maybe small bits yeah, yeah. and you'll have an error. Would, yeah. Whereas you, you're going to end up with an irregular mm -hmm. shape and you really need to be able to assess it as accurately as possible. I understand, yeah. And the only other thing I thought about is. Are they all going to be? Are they going to be flat or an angle? They're all going to be basically. Well, this, well, this, well, this I'm going to. I'm going to um, I've already got the equipment, so I've been out and purchased mm. the equipment. You know, beforehand, really. You know, which, yeah. which is a bit cheaper, really. But I've got fishing line, and I've also got I got weights as well. I have got lead weights. So basically, you, you've got your pontoon, and there's like a um, a rail underneath those pontoons. I don't, I don't know if you know this. There's existing plates already already there. Yeah. So uh, the pontoons yeah. that works fine, but yeah. attaching it to boats would be my question. Yeah, but this is something I would. Well, this is also down to you know the boat you know the boat owner as well. But, you know, he may want it in a certain place. So I won't make any decision on that until I've actually approached a few boat owners. And so at the end of the day, you know, it's their property and. Um, you know, that's something that I would have to skip. Yeah, so this would uh, basically, yeah, there'd be a weight there. It's quite a substantial weight. Um, this would be attached to the one, two, and um, it would obviously be fully submerged, so it would be, you know, in that angle. I mean, it, it has proven successful because, uh, like I say, Helen, who's been doing this project all last year, you know, she's had no problems whatsoever, like, you know. She has lost the odd one or two, but, she, um, but, um, but like I say, she didn't use fishing wire at first, she used string. Um, and that corroded over time, you know, she lost it and, and you know, she had to start again, but the fishing wire I've got is of quite a good quality. So, we, you know, we so I was just wondering, you mentioned the second part of that, that's going to be the effectiveness of something, but boats and the sea. I mean, given that the boat hole is quite a bit more underneath the sea, it's an area, it's an area, so yeah, I mean, as in different water that. flows, I'm just wondering, are you going to be able to... I understand, I mean, as we tried for the variability on the whole, of where things are more likely to attach, irrespective of whether... I mean, again, again, it might be a case of sticking maybe two or three, two or three on each boat as opposed to one. Again, I don't think it's been tried before, you know, I mean, I mean don't quote me on that, but uh, it's going to be a case of trial and error with it, you know, with this. It's, um, so, I'm just uh, thinking at the bottom yeah. of my boat where it's anti-fault, yeah. depending yeah. on anti-fault every year, yeah. it's going to be a short period. Um, but you tend to get accumulations in certain areas and not on the other side. I understand, yeah. I mean, presumably that's to do with yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah well, this was the idea of, of it going on the yeah, boat in the first place, see, yeah, because yeah. Um, you're limited really down on the pontoons. You know, you've, got, you've, got, you've, got, you've got, just got that area, you know, there's not enough, you know, there's not a lot of wave action there, as opposed to right on the, you know, the open water, you know, as you know. So, uh, like I say, you know, it's something we're not going to know until it's tried. Brilliant, thanks. I'm afraid we're going to have to move us on. Claire's got me keeping to one minute. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.